with the uh, Irish Independent sports page for you this morning. A couple of stories to tell you about here. Jackson Deal looks dead as sale backer speaks out. This is uh, the sale Sharks move for Paddy Jackson, writes uh, Rory O'Connor here this morning. Uh, Paddy Jackson's Stuart Dowling appears to be dead in the water after one of the club's main sponsors, AJ Bell, contacted the club to express their concerns about it. Uh, he says, uh, sale Sharks are very aware of the strong values ingrained within our business, many of which are shared by the club and their supporters. Uh, we've total faith in Steve Diamond and the owners to reflect these values whilst uh, they are stewards of the club. So, um, uh, as has been pointed out, Sale have been in this position before where they've denied approaches for certain players and then it uh, has actually turned out to be the case that they were after them. But there's a slightly different dynamic on this one. But that's the story by Rory O'Connor there in the back page of the Irish Independent this morning. Fixture set for time. Changes to avoid clash with Liverpool's European final, writes uh, Colin Keyes. And Rory O'Connor again over here on the right-hand side. So this is just the pretty obvious point, Richard. I would have thought that uh, the opportunity for the Pro 14 and for the GEA to avoid a clash with what is essentially one of the biggest sporting events on the planet in a given calendar yeah. is probably just a fairly wise move. And sorry, the GEA have come out and said that they are going to avoid that, are they? This, these are, are, these are the, the, I think it's a case of sources say that um, the GEA would look to try and move the fixtures. Right, well yeah. that's, that's unusually yeah. accommodating. It them, is. They, they, may, they may have been known previously to actually sort of go the opposite direction and yeah. refix yeah. to oh, it. Shot, it. Shot at 7.30. <laughs> oh, I'll put it on for that. See what they think of that. Think on football. <laughs> or soccer, I should say. <laughs> soccer more to the soccer, point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no. It, well, it's it's. Um, I, I think as well, it's going to be a particularly good Champions League final. So yes. um, you'd want to be accommodating that, yeah. if they have any sense. I heard somebody saying earlier that it might be uh, a seven-six. Might not be that uh, unlikely in the Champions League final. It's t entirely plausible, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it is. And I suppose the yeah, it's uh, the amount of goals that have been scored uh, in the Champions League campaign, particularly mm. in the knockout stages. Mm. It's really unusual. Um, so they generally tend to involve Liverpool games as well, which is yeah. obviously uh, yeah, of course. due deference to their attack and all that sort of stuff. But yeah. a little bit of work to be done. But it's a bit like America, you know. It's like it's like you know you'll reel Americans in this way. Yeah, that's you know, right. It's, yeah. like for, it's a ploy. It's a deliberate ploy here. Yeah, by, uh, the goals have got bigger for you know, <laughs> Liverpool games. Um, the other story on the back of the Irish Independent here is uh, climate not conducive to home title fight. Uh, right, Sean McGoldrick here on boxing. Uh, it's a story that features in some of the other newspapers as well that uh, the climate um, here in terms of um, some of the boxing promoters and um, some of the societal issues that we're having in terms of gangland uh, warfare means that uh, a potential title fight for Katie Taylor who obviously unified uh, some of the belts last weekend in uh, New York may not have the potential to go ahead. It's kind of disappointing given the level of um, elite boxers that we have access to in Ireland now. I mean, the, the, yeah. a card in the three arena, including Katie and Michael Conlon and um, mm. um, Carl Frampton, and some of these some of these guys would be pretty bloody sensational. Yeah, you would have thought so. Um, it's it's a, it's a, it's a shame. Um, it's a shame that that kind of interferes to such an extent. Yeah. And obviously difficult to elaborate on it in the same way that the reporter mm. couldn't really elaborate mm. uh, or, or her manager was was kind of couldn't really go into too much detail even the manager was sort of having to be circumspect about yeah. the languages used so it's yeah and I, I suppose more pertinently for me I'm doing a after much doing a gig in Bray on Saturday All right. so the the real relevance to the story is is you know whether I should do my Katie Taylor yeah. out in Bray I think you probably wouldn't get out of there without doing your Katie Taylor. I know, but that's the thing, you know, it's absolutely fantastic <laughs> to be in Bray. I'm absolutely delighted, so I am, yeah, it's just fantastic. You know, I just can't believe that I'm here back in Bray. Because obviously as a little girl, like, I was going down to the gym every day. Fantastic, I just love, I just love boxing and, you know, reading the scriptures and then going out and beating the holy <laughs> shit out of someone. <laughs> Yeah, uh, does the yeah. Katie material come easy to you? Or is that, I mean, there's a lot of good. Oh, it's obviously it? very hard because you have to kind of. There's a bit of a thing going on in the throat that's hard to keep up. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, you, know, you just have to give it a go and hope that it comes out in the way that you've anticipated it. It's a bit like a right hook or something like that. It's hard to maintain the jobs and it's hard to maintain the vocal dexterity. <laughs>
the fact that she's national treasure <laughs> doesn't bother you in the slightest. Well, bit. <laughs> no, I, I am. I am a little bit worried about meeting meeting her or her family somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, I get a few more years out of it anyway. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But uh, ah, yeah, I'm sure she doesn't care. Um, I'm sure she's absolutely flattered by it. Um, the Irish Times, uh, Jurgen Klopp's trash metal style strikes a chord with English ideal, writes uh, Barney Roney here in the Irish Times this morning. Uh, lots of Liverpool reflections here uh, today. And uh, Costa denies Wenger a Europa final fling. That's reflections on Atletico's 1 0 win over Arsenal last night. We'll talk to Kevin Kilban about that uh, in just a minute. Uh, some other great stuff around the, this uh, section of the Irish. Uh, Times sports page, particularly some of the articles that stood out for this page for me, particularly, again, more reflections on uh, Katie Taylor. Here's some great League of Ireland coverage uh, over here. Women's hockey down here. Men's hockey here. Is there Good ad for the podcast here for Malachi Clerkin. up there as well. Have you um, spotted that at the top? That's kind of it then. There's really there's no, no, some other, seen, seen some other stuff going on up here, but that's sort of the main there's thing. A, there's a very flattering photo there. That, that that's, that's not a recent photograph here, Charlotte. <laughs> that is about, seriously, that is about, I'd say, 20 years ago. <laughs> I don't know, you know... Uh, what they need. All they have to do is look up the, the internet. Look up the internet. Uh, Which I had my article Hot on. Hot the reds, uh, then screw are, back. Are, are we actually going to talk about this? Absolutely. Or? To the days when I was truly snooker loopy. So it's a reflection, sort of a craving for times of yore. Well, it, it's, it, it is a little bit. I mean, there is, there is a, I suppose, um, you know, I did, I, and I mentioned it in the article that, that um, I was pretty snooker obsessed. Um, and um, there is, uh, yeah. It is. It is. It is around that time. The the uh, the eighties um, and um, yeah, the, the 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 battle, I suppose, between conformity and and anarchy, yeah. um, and uh, Alex Higgins, Jimmy White, and and Steve Davis, and and Terry Griffiths, and mm. people like that. Terry Griffiths still has the most remarkable hair, I think, of any of any snooker generation. Um, but. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was, I was so obsessed with. It. I, I it, it, what got me really obsessed with it was that. Uh, I mean, as well, it's it's a well established, brilliant match between Higgins and White, uh, in nineteen eighty two, and uh, at that stage as well, the snooker was covered all the time. Yes. It was on live on BBC, and they had an amazing commentary team, whispering Ted Lowe, and a fella called uh, Jack Carnham, and Clive Everton as well. <laughs> Clive Everton who. Uh, was very, very, uh, you know, determined to describe Alex Higgins as being very loyal to the crown. <laughs> and during the snooker match, you know, what the hell does that have to do with anything? But um, yeah, so so I got so obsessed with it that that I turned our kind of bockety dining table into uh, yeah, right. I put six polystyrene cups yeah. and you know, kind of makeshift queue and everything, and uh, painted. Seriously, did this. Painted uh, table tennis balls, red, white, and <laughs> wow. uh, black. Right. And away I went. Yeah. Cushions. You get pretty good. I mean, if you were to, at any point after that, go onto an actual table, you presumably would be pretty expert. Well, yeah. It, it, there, was, there, was, there, was, there was a bit of a tenuous link between that form of snooker and the actual thing mm. on a full size table. Mm. But I did eventually make a break of 87. And right. So, misspent youth, my backside great, is, yeah. um, is all I can say. But yeah, no, I just looking at it recently, and I still will look at the final, and that's kind of the point of the article that even though you kind of fall out of love with something, yeah. um, I still can't help but watch it. Yeah. And um, but uh, yeah, is it, it's exclusively on Eurosport now, is that? It's on. It seems to be on Eurosport Live more than any other channel. Yeah. I think BBC will show the final live, okay. but it's a little bit like the way they cover tennis, almost like yeah. the you know Australian Open or something, where they show the latter stages. BBC, this is yeah. uh, live, yeah. but everything else is kind of pre-recorded. It's really like you know the graveyard shift. They have recorded um, highlights from midnight till two in the morning. Right. Uh, but otherwise it's on live on Eurosport with Colin Murray, oh, yes. the sort of cheeky guy from BBC. Yeah. And everything is just like, he's really bigging everything up and it's all absolutely fantastic. And I'm here with Jimmy White and Jimmy White, Jimmy White, so if you're bloody hell, I'll just get out of bed for this. <laughs> Jimmy White has no telly kind of, you know, now at all. Right, he's yeah. just like, he behaves, on a TV set like he would in the Jacks, you yeah, feel, yeah, you know, yeah, it's just, yeah. there's just no effort at all. Uh, apart from his hair, he's obviously put a lot of effort into his hair. I, I actually, I don't have your sport. I, it ah. turns out it's, and I no real sort of uh, reason to find out if I had your sport or not up until 
Uh, I actually read your piece last night and I thought, oh, I'll throw on a bit of snooker and have a look. Yeah. And I don't, it's one of the sports channels I actually don't have. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good channel. I mean, it's good for tennis. I don't yeah. know whether you like tennis, but... Uh, I know you're a tennis nut. I'm, I'm a bit of a tennis nut, much. yeah. Um, and the last few years as well, the last, I suppose the last decade mm. has uh, re-established tennis. I think it was in trouble around mm. the Pete Sampras era. Mm. Um, it was it was very i just think any any individual sport if it's dominated to that extent by one individual uh it's just it's really tedious it after a while. Dull, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 so yeah i know i guess it used to be a bit of an event it was an event sport wasn't it for quite a while and it's just the fact that yeah. it, it being it does strike me that like the bbc giving it that sort of tokenism of a bit of highlights after midnight and we'll show the final it's i mean you don't get invested in a tournament it's like that you, no. you come to it at the final and you haven't seen much of it and they're trying to make a big deal about the you know it's like trying to pluck a story out of it from somewhere that ronnie o'sullivan and ali carter spat and yes. it's kind of like yeah. you know i think they were having a bit of crack because yeah. they were yeah you know maybe a bit <laughs> bored themselves almost yeah, yeah. I had this uh, Steve Davis pot black table. I don't know if you remember that. Oh yeah. In the uh, must have been the eighties. I must have my brother set up. We had a spare room in the house that uh, used to be a shop, bizarrely, and um, had no purpose other than to be the crucible for about a month of the year, where we would go in and we would set it up perfectly with the chairs in sort of either corner, and we'd have the sort of glass of orange juice and stuff in the middle. We didn't smoke or anything like that, but uh, <laughs> we definitely had it set up at, at the crucible. The only slight difference was that we used to thump seven shades out of each other uh, when things weren't going in each other's uh, sort of direction. So with or so without like, cues? Like generally without, cues but down? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'd be certain enough that at some point or another there was the odd dig was given, but yeah. you know, it'll be full on warfare. That my father would generally have to come in and sort of either throw one of us out or sort of calm things down or whatever. Yeah. And was this on, a, on like, a, like a six by three or something? Or Pot size, it must have been, yeah. It yeah. must have been a six by yeah. three, yeah. yeah. It wasn't, uh, wasn't anywhere near full size necessarily. Like yeah. It was rickety like enough. Could you fold it? No, no, you okay. couldn't fold it, but um, it wasn't either as if it was sort of put together with any sort of great hardware. Or anything it wasn't like a that. slate bed, for example. It was not a slate bed, it was chipboard. Yeah, that was the thing about, well, I, my, I, I used to iron my table. Right. And, you know, it was only, you know, because I thought that's what I was looking at on the, on the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> during the World Championships yeah. when they had no coverage on. They used to kind of do these little kind of documentaries as part of the right. little reports on how to Behind look after scenes, your table. Right. Okay. And one of them was ironing your table. Right. So I did the same thing, like with my Maz Moulinex. <laughs> <laughs> and, did it work? Uh, well, it, it, I don't know, it, it kind of worked, but there was no reason for it, because there wasn't a slate bed, it was a chip, <laughs> <laughs> chipboard as well. It's totally, yeah. totally, uh, you know, like not relevant to yeah, do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, I, I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. I, I, well, I enjoyed doing ironing my table, interestingly, more than ever ironing a shirt. Ironing, yeah, I think no, ironing I a shirt has to still be there. Up there with the greatest tedium, isn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah, anyone who can do it, uh, with a smile on their face. Actors don't have to do it, you see. That's the uh, that's the. Key. Well, this is it. I get my iron, my shirts ironed by some <laughs> runner. <laughs> um, uh, Racing Post here. I will just give you a flavour of the back page on this one. Where seagulls dare is Brighton unlikely uh, to be overawed by Red Devil slashes is Brighton and uh, Hove Albion against Manchester United tonight. Uh, good picture of Shane Duffy there on that one. We'll talk to Kevin Kilbane about that. And uh, the final one for me is the Irish Daily Star. And the front page here is that story uh, by Kieran Cunningham. Uh, Taylor about blow, Kelly's feud, KO. Powers that be is the quote here. Um, uh, say that Irish world champ can't fight here. Her manager tells of security concerns. Uh, that's the Kieran Cunningham story. Uh, Scareway to heaven is um, reflections on the uh, Liverpool game. Madrid should fear us, uh, they say as well there, and uh, guns can't cost it. Uh, door still open for Connolly, by the way, is another story here by Carlo Kane in the Irish Star. We're going to hear a little bit actually from uh, Jim Gavin on that exact topic now. Yeah, like uh, I suppose over recent weeks, the hasn't been uh, available for club activity in the championship, both hurling football and, and uh, for county football. So um, that's a, a decision that we we respect. I uh, hope everybody else does as well. Uh, it is an amateur sport, and um, uh, but the door is always open for for Dermot in, in the Dublin senior football team, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll see him back playing Gaelic games soon. Yeah, we'll see. It doesn't seem, uh, reading between the lines, as if the lines of communication are necessarily all that open between Jim Gavin and Jeremy Connolly. Uh, the Times Ireland edition is uh, the last one for me. Now, my players do not cheat, uh, insists Jim Gavin. So this is uh, a bit of criticism. That's a bit of heat that's been coming his way. And uh, dejected looking Arsene Wenger. I, this story is... I, 
Um, if I was of the uh, tearful sort of uh, bent, I'd have a few tears in my eyes over this one because it's uh, an absolute tragedy. And looking at the poor man there makes me feel just utterly dejected for him. Yeah. Uh, but there we go. Arsene Wenger uh, bows out in not so much style. Richard, you've gonna you're gonna kick us off in your uh, newspapers there, the Irish Examiner. If you could let the viewers let uh, let them know what's the going on. The Irish Examiner. Yeah. Um, that obviously is uh, the Diego Costa one again. Um, yeah. Him again. Um, uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, can we, are we seeing that? Oh, we are. Yeah, there yeah, we go. Yeah. Good piece from Raj inside as well. Yeah, there is. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's um, uh, you know, he's talking about, uh, he says, um, uh, tell me and I'll forget, show me and I may remember, involve me and I will understand. And uh, it's, it's really all about, you know, coaching techniques and, uh He's in Crusaders, obviously, and uh, he's he's uh, picking stu stuff up. Um, and I, he sounds like he's going to be quite a force mm. uh, by the time he gets back to Ireland, which presumably he will. Um, I know there's some some talk about him being connected to Connacht, but I think that's probably mm. nonsense. Where do you uh, see him coming back? Where? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I wouldn't even speculate on it, to be honest. I, 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 I mean, if he's in Crusaders, you'd imagine maybe some kind of an Irish role, mm. I would have thought, um, in, in the future. But, um, but I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't know. He's obviously connecting the Carberry story as well with Munster and wondering why um, you know, he's not in the frame for, for Munster. I suppose he's looking at it from a, a Munster perspective, which mm. is pretty unusual from mm. Raj. <laughs> um, he's very strong in it, isn't he? He's like, this, if, this, if Blaine yeah. is not fully fit, yeah. Th why would we not get this guy in? Yeah, well, I, I, I think he has a point. Um, you know, I think Munster, if there was one thing that was pretty clear during during the, the latter stages of the, the Champions Cup, it was that um, they need they need a, an inform 10. And, and Keatley's obviously, Ian Keatley is a, is a very talented player, but um, he just, you know, didn't play to his potential. Mm. And, um, you know, Carberry obviously ha has has an X factor. I mean, to, to my mind, as a 10, you know, and obviously there are people who know much more about rugby than I do, who have played it at a higher level, who, who speak on this platform. But to me, he's untried as a 10, just because he's got so few opportunities, mm. um, certainly at, um, at that kind of level. Um, he's uh, he's you know we all saw for ourselves like the the impact he made for Leinster, um, uh, which was very which is very good, but it's um, you know if you're talking about Champions Cup and talking about international rugby, mm. it's um, it's a very but he needs game time. The yeah, way, he does. Yeah, the way yeah. uh, the way everyone needs game yeah, time, yeah. and um, you know that so it's it's I, I think Munster could do with him, and I think he could do with Munster. Yeah. Um, I, I would I would feel sorry. I have to say for for either Byrne or Carberry mm. um, in that situation where they're kind of being told where where to play. Mm. And uh, I mean, Gordon Darcy wrote a really interesting piece, I, don't, I, I thought, um, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, uh, that effectively Leinster are being punished for their success if they're, you know, facilitating yeah. other, uh, other provinces. Mm. Uh, I think that was a, a well-made point. Um, but uh, yeah, I think... Um, uh, a monster could certainly could certainly do with uh, an injection as well of of spark and creativity, mm. and I think with Zebo going as well, True. that's that's yeah. going to be severely lacking. Yeah, they're crying. Out. I mean, look, maybe Blaine Dallas, he says, sort of steps up to it. The game time thing is an interesting one because, like, in a way that Johnny Sexton responded to game time very quickly when he came in with Leinster, that uh, mm. he was meteoric. But we don't know. And that's the sort of great variable with this thing that. Uh, yeah. We shall see how it pans out over the next while. The Dermot Connolly story is uh, features as well in the Herald. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Con away. That's a superb um, little pun there. I think. Um, I don't know how they come up with that. Do you? It's. I, I mean, I don't get the. Uh, yeah, yeah. Neither do I. <laughs> um, gone. He, gone away. Is that the? I mean. I presume yeah, so. I presume yeah. so. But um, yeah, I mean, you're the GA man. I, mm. I, I've, I've no idea, uh, <laughs> really. But but yeah, there's there's obviously some disciplinary issues in, in involved in that. There's been a long-standing disciplinary issue, but uh, this one is just bizarre. I d they don't seem to be speaking to each other, which is the unusual thing that um, you know. That right. When Gavin comes out to speak about it, it's uh, 
We don't get any great clarity now. To be fair, that is tends to be Jim Gavin's way anyway. But mm. um, I think we'll we'll see. I can't I can't see him featuring very much over the next while. Yeah. Um, Arsene Wenger. Arsene Wenger out. It's over for Arsenal boss after a miserable defeat. Um, yeah, he doesn't look too pleased there, really, does he? He's uh, you'd want to be giving him a bit of a hug. Um, yeah, it is. It's it, it is. We we touched on it earlier. It's it's a it's a sad end. It's a tragedy. Um, yeah. But yes, he'd probably say I didn't see it. <laughs> um, uh, and there's another Pretty one. Much the same thing on the sun. Yeah, Wenger and another one of um, the pirate man. The Guardian. Um, yeah. Who's uh, yeah. He's a pretty scary fellow as well, isn't he, uh, Costa? He sure is. He's a he's a footballing brute. As the uh, if he doesn't beat you with the skill, he'll 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 bite you. <laughs> he'll dump you. Yeah, yeah. 